how do? And today, I've got my McCurk Volvo on the table. It's kind of long overdue in all honesty. So, as I'm waiting for a few bits for my spray gun, for painting Lyana's truck, I thought I'd move on and start getting the McCurk Volvo finished off. So I've got all the bits painted, base coated, everything else clear coated. Um, I wasn't happy with how my uh, clear coat turned out the first run. I sprayed it all up well and then as I was ready to put the next coats on I could see that it had orange peeled badly. I've never used the Halfords lacquer before in all honesty. It's only over the last 18 months that I have actually started using the Halfords paints. I'm more prone to using the Holtz spray paints. And their lacquer, it comes out when you spray it. I don't spray with my finger full down on the trigger. I, I, I do kind of control the spray. And with the Holtz, you get like a wider spray and it comes out a bit thicker and a bit wetter and a bit faster. I'd normally like to do like two or three passes of like a medium wet coat so you can see it's gone on pretty wet but not too wet obviously. So I thought rather than wet sanding it all back using like some 1600s, 2000s um, sandpaper wet and dry I decided I, <laughs> I really don't have the patience for it. More to the point, I'd started up in this corner doing these bits and already from trying to apply a bit of pressure just to wet sand it lightly with no pressure really, um, the wind frames started coming off from the bumpers and if that was to come off and then I need to glue it, there's going to be paint that's going to run in the glue and everything else and then it's back to square one of literally taking the cab back to bare panels and rebuilding it all again and I ain't going there so Lennon just did a few test sprays on something just to get used to how this lacquer sprays because like I say I'm used to a wide fan even this Autotech lacquer this comes out quite thick medium wet um, sprays on a fan spray but I'm not comfortable with this on the trucks it's not as clean of a lacquer finish than the holes but I do like that for odd jobs and just little bits here and there it is handy but the Halfords yeah that caught me out so lesson learned always test spray regardless whatever you spray if you think you know how to spray and you're using a different spray can test it just get a feel for how that can sprays because they clearly all pressurize differently and everything else Anyway, enough waffle about that mistake, but you can't really tell unless you actually get up close to it and look. But funnily enough, I will walk into the shop earlier for a loaf of bread and I'm looking at all the new cars and they're all orange peeled. So I didn't feel as bad after that. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's got a nice like mirror finish. I can look into it, I can have a shave, I can see myself, it's all clear. My hands, hello which is what I want but like I say when you get up close you do see the orange peel effect in there but I am happy with how it's turned out in the end and now I'm glad to be uh, putting this back together so for this as I've had to move forward in the manual because of paint and skip bits such as the bumper and putting the front bumper together and the headlights in there which would have been parts 42A, 42B. So I would have skipped that bit to move on due to paint reasons. So now we're gonna backtrack through the manual to uh, some earlier stages just to finish the jobs off that I've left, which is the bumper, the headlights, getting the grill in there. And then the next points from the manual is coming up to actually put in the interior in, which is where I was up to. Now. With the interior you do get these like corner pieces and stuff and these are all going to mount the lockers in the roof and all that but these need to be like 
glued into place in here somewhere somehow and stuff like that so I couldn't continue with the interior until this was actually finished with the um, paint stages like I say everything all just goes in on glues and then everything else can clip to it but you'll see what I mean as we get to that stage so for now I am just gonna get this front bumper made up um, get all the headlights in there and get this on the front of the truck as you can see I have already gone back and popped the side skirts on there and they do just clip on there's a couple of little like things behind the tanks and they just slot over and lock into place and they can just pop off I'd put the rear mud guards rear arch kits on I think I'd already previously done that before they were painted it was dead simple just pushing them into place so they're on we've got the skirts on um, I've got the air tank in there and some other little bits so yeah let's get this front bumper on there and then I can move on to the cab this is all that's left guys of this truck it's gone from this big box behind me to just a little box of interior parts and then like your windows and stuff like that I mean the seats themselves are about 100 pieces just to put the seats together so complex build getting pretty glad to see the back of it and I am actually debating whether to cannibalize it for that server note motor and gearbox out of there because I'm never going to run this as an RC if someone wallops that with a truck front bumper parts 42A, 42B, 42C, 43 and then we're back on track to where we was before so I've just got what I need out here a few little light imitation light bulbs mounting brackets for the back of the bumper I've just mocked one up there it's not actually screwed together I was just getting a feel for how they go together because they go together in like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten there's about 15 pieces per headlight anyway so I have in fact just gone ahead and done that one off camera which I'd started mocking up um, it's a bit more of a pain in the ass than I thought it were gonna be you look at the manual and it looks like you put all the light housing together and just close it in there but no you don't you have to took like the lens around the bumper and then tuck it in and stuff like that and then add everything else onto the top of that but there's no arrows or indication within the manual that shows you have to do that it just shows you putting it together so I was kind of losing my shit a bit there to be honest with you so I have just put this for me thing down while I'm working because I'm working from the back of a part that I've recently painted and clear coated and stuff um, I don't want to be marking that paintwork by having it on a cutting mat or on a hard surface so I've just put this nice little soft foam under there just to protect that before I put these lenses in I am just going to wipe them up and get them clean and free of any fingerprints and then we're going to carefully put that into there but like I say you don't want fingerprints on the inside of your lens and then you're there polishing and it never goes and then you're just going to have to take it all apart just to remove that fingerprint that's if you're that fussy now we have one nice shiny lens and what we're going to do is the part where the indicator would go there this is going to like tuck out the front there which it doesn't explain that so I had originally built it up as a unit and then wondering why it wouldn't close up there as that part was catching so anymore I would have ended up just filing it out but that were pretty frustrating And the next one, which would be for the bottom, which I believe this is the same principle. So I'm going to go from the outside, well, through to the outside from there. Damn you. Yep. Pop that one into there. And then just in case you missed it the first time round, guys. <laughs> Well, technically you did, so here we go, here I'm doing two. <laughs> Fucking pain in the ass. Right. There's 
now we're going to construct this uh, little light section we have here also another thing is this green bit here it looks like a piece that you would put in there but actually there is no such thing no such piece exists it's not in the rear of the manual through all the parts listings it is nowhere in the parts it's not even listed to be used as a part so that again was just a real pain in the ass so I've spent a lot of time looking for this and it doesn't appear to exist but as you can see it's just showing you to construct it and the, like it's just all going to seat into there it doesn't tell you to like pop the lenses through there or anything like that but again with the chrome parts just keep that free of any dust and crap just to keep it more effective um, best to degrease self or wear some little rubber gloves or something just to stop fingerprints getting into places that are going to be enclosed things like that when you know it's there that fingerprint if i put a print there and i know it's there i'm going to see that fingerprint from 100 yards away at the other end of a layout just for the fact i know it's there and i presume a lot of you guys are the same these little things are also a pain as they keep falling out when you're trying to put it in there <laughs> and you have these imitation light bulbs they are various sizes they go from small medium a bit more medium a long pointy one and the big one so i'm gonna drop those into place we're just carefully dropping these little bulbs into the back of the light here They're just imitation ones but they're so small and fiddly so now we have the bulbs in place they can uh, put this on which is just gonna sort of hold the bulbs in place but it won't hold this in place like a little magic trick and as long as that white bit of plastic that keeps doing the magic lines up with that then we're all good now we want to take the little indicator part this is fiddly in itself and this is just gonna see it up in here then we're going to take this portion and this is just going to bolt to the back of that in the manual this is where this supposedly piece that they've shown that doesn't exist would go in between there so we'll just pop that on there and then screws we've got one in here which is then just going to hold this back piece on and then the rest of them actually screw through the remaining holes into the back of the bumper you can see the little imitation bulbs in there now do you have to apply a little bit of pressure just to get it to stretch and fall in and now I can bolt that up I'll screw it up there so now we have the headlights on there so the next part would be to put the steps onto the bumper like so and then I have scuffed up on here and we've got the backs of the steps scuffed so we've got somewhere for the glue to bite for when we pop those onto there one onto there and then we have two of these which I'm just going to sit over there like so and then screw them in and they're just going to act like a little clamp like so so now for a tiny little drop of yoohoo and we can 
stick these steps into place and do the other side now we're going to need this and then this part of the front grill that's just going to sit over there like so and then slot into here Right, so there's little notches in the bottom of the bumper there there and there and stuff and then there's these notches on the grill which are to obviously sit into the holes but then the notches are stopping the grill from sitting in properly I did manage to just bring it in on an angle and bend these around luckily without snapping those off because if those go the grill's just going to fall out and anyway, we'll go ahead and just bolt that on there now so got that bolted up in the back of there so now in the grill bit we have these which I've also colour coded to the truck and these do just bend into position I'll just rest the cab up on there So yeah with the cab just sat on there then you can kind of see a lot more potential with it the interior is probably going to have to be broke down into a couple of parts it's not like a Tamiya interior where you're just bolting your seats in and a little dashboard to your windows it is nothing like that as I said there's a bed in there there's overhead lockers there's door cards the door cards are like three or four pieces on their own um, the seats which is so on pack of parts uh, the seats are complex in themselves then you've got like indicator stalks which go onto the steering wheel and everything you've got the floor pedals there's all sorts it is a very detailed interior and then I, I really don't know what I'm going to do with this truck in all honesty but yeah it's nice to have this truck moving again as much of a pain in the arse as it is to build um, if they wasn't as expensive as they are I would build another one like learning from experience of this one I know I've learned what goes where and how goes where and stuff whereas this it's all been a kind of figure it out kind of build and then I lost interest with it before Covid nothing to do with the truck I just genuinely started losing a bit of interest with building in general um, but yeah it's, it's nice to have it back out I appreciate it more now from it being away when I look at it it's a bonny little wagon but I wouldn't pay the money that they are for to build another one personally but it has been an incredible build so far and this is kind of what I've been looking forward to now is the interior so there's going to be more painting as I colour coordinate the interior with the cream I will be leaving the cream uh, most of it where it's grey in there and just plain boring grey apart from that very light pale grey but all the dark grey stuff uh, I'm going to be doing in the flat purple that I've done the interior walls in and I think that should just look nicely with the cream so it will be like purple and cream so yeah I do thank you all for watching and um, hope you enjoyed the video hope you like how the build's progressing it is a nice truck so don't forget to like the video Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell to stay notified of any other video. And feel free to drop a comment and I shall catch you all in the next video. Ciao for now guys.